Well, thank you very much indeed for everybody coming along to the climate change panel um, today. And um, if I just kind of um, take you through the beginnings of the agenda, um, the first thing is that we've got apologies. Have we got any apologies to record? Chair, we've got apologies from Councillor Rock. Okay. Councillor Rock is, is covering for me uh, at another event. Um, and then there is disclosures of interest. Do we have any that have not been declared before? Councillor McBird together. Yeah, thank you, Chair. Um, I'd like to declare that I, in December, I volunteered uh, for Net Zero Stratford at the community kitchen in uh, Clopton. Thank you. And uh, if there's a no, no more, then we move on to... We've got standard di disclosures, um, and uh, if there's no changes to that, we the, that is, you know, carries on. And then we have the minutes of the last minute, and um, to, we uh, are you happy that I confirm and sign the minutes held on the 7th of November 2023? Are there anybody, does anybody have any particular issues to raise uh, with that, with the minutes for that agenda? No? then uh, it's taken that we can sign them. The next one is matters arising. There's a list of matters arising. Uh, if anybody wants to uh, question any of those, um, uh, can I... Uh, okay, can I, can I just... Uh, on one of the actions, the original objectives of the Climate Emergency Task of Finnish Group be reviewed. Um, to confirm whether they've been achieved or not. Uh, and that is ongoing and relevant documents have been circulated amongst the panel for review uh, or were to be um, circulated amongst the panel for review. Uh, once that is, th those are out for review, I'd welcome any feedback on uh, the original uh, objectives. Uh, otherwise, anybody, any other comments? Yes, Councillor Hatch. I'd like to talk um, about the event mentioned in the matters arising, the um, council-led Great Big Green Week event um, that uh, I've been discussing with Manuela, so I'd like to share what we've been discussing and hopefully get your approval and support. Um, so Great Big Green Week is a national event um, where towns put on a series of um, community events that celebrate action and good news um, um, activities that are going on around the country. It's June the 8th to the 16th this year. Um, Stratford have been, I think it will be its third time in running it. And it will also be five years since the District Council have declared a climate emergency. So we thought it would be good that the Council hosted something um, that showed what, we ha what the District Council have done and what they plan to do, but also to act as a public engagement event um, where we would run various... Uh, workshops um, and the, th the um, themes of which um, are going to show what the council have done to celebrate what has been done in our district and to share good practice and to hopefully be the start of something um, and it will involve we'd like to involve officers so that there can be some public involvement with officers feeding into policy. And Manuel is going to talk uh, a bit yes, more. Yes, Councillor Pettigella, would you like to kind of expand further? So we, we envisage it as a council-facilitated, community-led climate change, and I think um, local engagement. And I think that the issue of having a local engagement event has been raised uh, during the last three years of the climate um, change panel by members of the public, but also, um, uh, I've, you know, we had requests at full council. So I think because it's the five years anniversary, we thought this would be quite fitting. Um, and as Councillor Hatch was saying, 
we, we see the aim as promoting community engagement, uh, but also to provide a springboard for, for more action and to showcase local best practice and celebrate these, which um, will be done as well during, uh, during the week. Um, and we, we think about, the, we, we're looking actually to look at the structure and how, uh, what will work better. And we think a mixture of workshops and stalls by stakeholders, by community groups, getting town and parish councils as well in uh, to, to tell us about what they've done in their community would work best. Um, so we hope that, um, you know, the panel can get on board um, and we are looking for volunteers to joining um, our working group on, uh, on you know, uh, finalizing um, a structure for, for the event. So, you know, if anyone uh, would like to get involved, whether they can contact either um, Councillor Hatch or myself or, or um, you know, Susan or Ellie, and uh, yes, let us know and then we'll, uh, we'll, um, we'll start. I, I think that's something that, uh, with a working group, we can work on the detail and make sh and make sure that it, you know you, it's fed back to you that on what kind of action plan and how we're planning. It will actually fit also well with the fact that we are going to be launching our community climate change fund, uh, and, and we'll be calling for for uh, projects for that. So it would should fit all quite, quite neatly together. So that's something to be um, to, to be discussed further, but. It mentioned here because we did have it as a matter arising that we would would do something for the big green week so we'll we'll explore further thank you very much indeed that's really uh, appreciated we now have public participation and we have one person that has put forward a, a, a would you like to come forward and um, talk about uh, your question to the panel That one? Yeah, okay. So, uh, it's a fairly regular question of mine about what's the, the progress for, uh, I actually named it as two of the ambitions, um, and that was for uh, de de declaring um, Net Zero as an organisation by 2025, and also by 2030 as being, um, you know, a, 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 the best possible position for uh, net zero as a, an area. So it's really a question of, uh, is it possible to see what progress is ma being made and what's outstanding? And um, although I didn't enter it as the question originally, it, I think it would be interesting to see it as a regular status, an ongoing status at each um, public climate panel meeting. Indeed, we, we are, uh, are raising um, this at, at every, every um, panel meeting trying now. At the last one, um, the officer, uh, Ellie, Ellie here, uh, did do uh, a breakdown of what they were doing on looking at the decarbonisation. That's in the previous minutes. And we can send the link on to you as to what was being done. But that included a review of the leisure centres and the energy that they were using and what measures could be taken to decarbonise, uh, also with our refuse trucks and uh, other assets that are owned by the district council as well are all being looked at to make sure that the, the you know, what measures can be taken uh, are taken to decarbonise. Uh, and as you ha just heard, um, we're also um, launching a community climate change fund to make sure that uh, the decarbonisation can go beyond our assets um, to making sure that um, uh, parish councils, community, co constituted community groups uh, can also undertake measures to do things in their own area. Um, I, I've been advised, but I, I will take uh, on board what, um, Ellie, what Eleanor Warren says, that we will be updating the emissions data soon. Uh, and so that people can see on the website. And I think there is other work to being done on the website to make sure that people can access this information directly themselves without having to go through the minutes of, of the panel. At the moment, it's, it's mainly in the middle. Um, uh, the, 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 we've been talking to, because some of that, that is within our own control. The assets are within our own control. We've also got the ability to influence others and work with others to decarbonise and bring down carbon footprints. 
and, and I've been having um, discussions, I've already had one set of discussions with the County Council about public transport and uh, uh, there is more to come because they want to, uh, I've asked them specifically to talk to us about um, what can be done within this particular district uh, as well. And um, there is work being done um, with the Warwick District Council and the County Council on electric vehicle charging, including a feasibility study to look more at provision for council-owned car parks, curbside, village halls, and for social housing as well. So that's not directly within our, our control to, to decarbonise, but we are going to be working with others in order to be able to do that. And as part of that, they've had meetings with Senex, the Energy Saving Trust, and the National Grid, and they are looking for other funding because obviously this does require funding to, to come in. So there's, there's quite a lot um, being done, but I don't know whether you're, you're able to um, update on, um, maybe particularly on uh, making sure that the data is available. Hello. Um, yeah, so like Councillor June had said, we're currently updating the emissions data for the carbon footprint of the whole council. Um, and that will show the kind of decrease in emissions that have been achieved since we started the emissions reporting back in 2019. Um, looking to get that updated on the website over the next month or so. So as soon as that's ready, I'm happy to pass over the link to you. Um, in terms of more kind of specific actions, what we're looking to do is provide a more public facing way of monitoring and showing progress. Um, at the minute, it's kind of recorded through these minutes. So breaking it down making that information a little bit more accessible. If you do have any kind of particular areas that you're most interested in, then please just feel free to drop me an email. I'm happy to have a chat with you, kind of as and when, really. Um, but yeah, that's it from me. And, and as we've set aside a, a community climate change, um, climate change fund for the council itself, so that it's got the ability to find the funds to be able to do solar panels or heat pumps, um, at, at, you know, because you can have all the um, desire in the world to do it, but if you haven't got the funds to do it with, then it, it, it doesn't move forward. But we've got, that is in the, um, that is in the uh, budget for going forward, as well as in the past budget, there is, some, there is money that hasn't been used and, and is going to be uh, rolled forward. Uh, but particularly this Community Climate Change Fund will be uh, launched, soft launched, uh, I think it's this week it will be launched. There will be a press route uh, out there and um, that means that um, community groups and uh, village or, uh, parish councils can start uh, putting their applications forward. Uh, and that includes not only work that they themselves can do, but also work that needs research in order to be able to take things further forward. So uh, I hope that is helpful. And do you have any other questions that you wanted to put to me uh, to clarify anything? Um, yeah, thanks. That that, that was uh, an interesting, comprehensive um, re response. And um, as always, the, the devil's in the details, and that, that's the area I'd like to drill down to. So there will always be some feasibility issues with, I, I believe, with electrifying the, um, the recycling trucks, um, where they're located, maybe, and, and there are all sorts of difficulties in going forward. And it's, it's understanding that level of detail and, and what, what timescales are involved and what decisions need to be made. That's the level of um, granularity. I'm, I'm used to sort of drilling through and understanding to see, OK, I, you know, there's a blockage there. We might get a delay or what's being done to recover the situation. Is that possible somehow to get visibility of that granularity? Yeah, so... Sorry. No, just... <laughs> um, so... The kind of reporting that we're talking about on the website should go down into that level of detail. Um, so showing really specific actions and specific steps against each emis emission source um, within the whole of the kind of estate and operations of the council. Um, so once, like I say, once that's kind of up and on the website, we'll keep you posted on it. Um, yeah, like you, I'm a, I'm a scientist. I like to see the data. I like to see, be able to drill down into it. Councillor Crump, would you like to come forward on, on, uh, with your question on this one? Well, I think it was just uh, some more information that uh, the task and finish groups are looking, working with the housing associations, because obviously they have a large number of properties uh, and we're trying to get them uh, to make their 
their properties is um, energy efficient as possible. Um, and this is where we can influence not, you know, our, um, our partners as well. So um, we are working with uh, the registered social landlords to try and uh, make them energy efficient. And obviously we all know how damp and mould is, is affecting people's lives as well. So it, it, it could be a win-win in both ways. So it's it's not just the district council doing these things. We're trying to encourage our partners to do do so as well. So hopefully that's uh, helpful. Yeah, there's um, one thing that, uh, and I do declare that I am a trustee. In fact, I was one of the founding trustees uh, of Act on Energy, and um, we uh, uh, they have been working in partnership with the district council to make sure that not only um, uh, you know social hand, ha ha house, uh, social, social rent households, but all households have access to the advice they need to be able to access government grants. And, and access to the district council grants as well. There are a considerable amount of grants available, but it sometimes needs expertise in order to be able to access them, and, and that's what they are doing. So hopefully that, you know, but I, I agree with you, it needs to be on the website and clear so that people can find the detail. So thank you very much indeed for your question. Okay, thanks. I'll, I'll be in contact directly. Right, thank you. On to the next uh, agenda item, and that is a presentation from Active Travel Films. Welcome to you, and um, that's Michael Clifford is going to do the presentation. And would you like to come forward to give it to us? Thank you. Okay, yeah, please. Okay, um, I'll just start by introducing myself. Uh, my name is Michael Clifford. I'm a filmmaker. I'm a BAFTA award-winning filmmaker. I make documentaries and drama. Um, I have, I guess, a personal interest or a passion for the environment, um, but also perhaps a personal interest in 
uh, one area of that in particular, which is travel and uh, active travel. And I guess I feel that there's a, a lack of coverage for transport as a subject, uh, despite it being really important. Um, just to give one example of that, um, uh, I, I've been uh, in touch with Eleanor about this project and um, looking at the statistics for Stratford District, uh, transport represents the, the biggest um, area of emissions for the whole district. So, uh, and yet, you know, it's not something we see uh, that much about in coverage uh, of climate. So, I think it's important. Uh, and uh, I put in an application for a levelling up grant and um, was very lucky and grateful to, to receive that uh, from, from the District Council and I'm now working with John Tonge who's, who I'm reporting to um, for, for the project. Uh, I'm making a, a series of five short films about active travel in the district and um, I'm work, trying to work in a sustainable way as well. Uh, and so it, over the last decade, I've been de developing techniques around using bicycles for filmmaking. Uh, and this year I made um, a feature length documentary called Chasing the Sun, which I'm gonna show you a little clip from uh, because we used bikes in the making of that. So I'd just like to introduce that concept. This film hasn't been released yet. Uh, we had a, a premiere at the Kendall Mountain Festival in November, um, and then it will be it will be released around March April time of uh, of next year. That's why I've just got it on my laptop to uh, to show it to you today. But I'd just like to show you a, a couple of minutes from from the film, um, just because it's got a shot of me on a bike, and I thought that'd be fun to to show you that to to kick things off. <clears throat> To cycle 204 or 5 miles in, in one day would be unbelievable. And as the ride crosses the country, we'll see how the bicycle is acting locally, offering a transport alternative, while at the very same time promoting physical and mental well-being. And we'll be making the film, at least in part by bicycle. Here's me, Michael, the director, and that's Tim, camera and editor on the back. We'll be using bikes to lower our emissions and get some great shots from the bicycle's point of view. To me, it seems like a bit of a no-brainer to say, OK, well, let's use the most simplest, most straightforward modes of transport. I think it's got the potential, honestly, to make the world a better place. When the bike became a thing in, towards the end of the 19th century, when it became mass-produced and available to people, what was the first thing that people did was, I wonder how far you can go on the bike? And it turns out that the answer was, almost unimaginably far. So, um, yeah, a little bit of lagging going on there, but hopefully you got the, got the idea. Um, yeah, so that was me on the bike. Um, uh, that's a bike that we used for, for that production. Uh, I've also got my own cargo bike, uh, which we'll be using in the production of the new films in Stratford District. Uh, I'm going out on Friday to test that out. Um, so you might see me riding around with somebody facing backwards um, and a camera in their hand. And if you do, um, that will be me. <laughs> um, so, uh, and then uh, we'll be shooting um, throughout the next few months because um, as, as I'm sure you're aware with a lot of um, projects like this, they, they're tied into the financial year. So the, the, um, the push is on there to complete for the end of, of March. Um, just going back to Chase, Chasing the Sun, the film that you just saw a little clip of, that was based around um, at an event called Chase the Sun where riders uh, cross from one side of the country to another in a single day. It takes place near the longest day of the year, so they have the longest amount of time to get from coast to coast. It's about 205 miles. Um, and what, what we did with the film was we kind of took it as an opportunity to look at the state of cycling in the UK and um, sort of pick up on what the mood is, what's happening in different places. 
Uh, and one thing that really qu quickly came across to me and became ve aware of very quickly, uh, because the, the English route, there are a few of these routes, but the English route goes from Kent, the Isle of Sheppey, to Western Supermare and crosses through London. And what I realised on that route is that you have really quite a, 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 a sense of disparity between different areas. So London now um, has really transformed in the last decade, I think, where active travel and cycling is concerned, uh, to the point that at the end of 2023, there was something like 1.2 million um, journeys by bicycle per day in London, which is the equivalent of a third of the number of, pe of people who use in the underground. Um, so a massive um, uptake there. And then you can contrast that with a lot of rural areas and you find a, a very, very different picture. So people feel, certain, you know, to cut to the chase, as it were, people do feel car dependent. They are car dependent um, because of, of various factors. So quite often people live in small places with very fast roads going through them. Um, there are no cycle lanes, um, there are no uh, a active travel in infrastructure, uh, and so on and so on. So they feel um, that the only way they can get around, they, they don't have a choice, um, they have to travel around by car. And certainly that some of that uh, w does apply to Stratford District, which is set itself a very diverse area, um, and, and this project's been great for me to um, you know, look at what's on my own doorstep, as it were. I live in Stratford, so it's it's possibly the equivalent of London for the district. Um, and, you know, I, I wasn't necessarily aware of exactly where the borders were uh, and what was in the district and what wasn't. So I've been finding that out and um, it's been very interesting and, you know, have been finding things similar to crossing the whole country, that there are places within the district which um, are very limited in terms of active travel. Um, but the approach is not, um, of, of the films, it's not an academic one. It's very much a people-led uh, series. It's about individual stories, people who are engaging with active travel and have um, interesting stories to tell. Um, but I, and, and that's the approach that I'm taking. Um, and I think that Stratford is, yes, it has similarities to other... Uh, non-metropolitan areas but it's it's unique as well so it's quite a unique place that has unique opportunity or you know special opportunities and challenges so that's something I'm, I'm aware of and I'm, and I'm looking to try and achieve in the series um, and one story that uh, one of the films that I'm particularly excited about is is looking at um, the growth, the p possible growth of greenways within uh, the um, within the district. So everybody knows the Stratford Greenway, and everybody loves the Stratford Greenway, and and it's a very well used uh, resource. Uh, but what I didn't know until I started researching this project, and therefore I always assume a lot of other people won't know either, is that there's actually the potential to have a network of greenways on um, old railway lines and tramways uh, around uh, the district. Uh, and I've been talking to Warwick District Council about the project as well, and they put me in touch with a new greenway project called the Two Shires Greenway, which it's hoped will eventually run from Ulster to Evesham. And uh, this year, in fact, I mean, hopefully in February, work will actually start on it and I'll be there to film it. Uh, and alongside that, I'm going to film um, uh, two people who use the Lias line, which is in the far north of the district. Uh, there are actually two people who work at Warwick uh, District Council and use that to commute from uh, Southam and Long Itchington into Leamington and Warwick. So therefore we'll see a greenway in action and then we'll see a brand new one getting started over in Salford Priors. Um, another project, I'm, another film that I'm hoping to do, I had a meeting about today, which is that I discovered my dentist in Ely Street, Langman's dentist, have, because uh, I started, I went to get my teeth checked and 
told them all about the project and they said, oh, we've got a sustainability program here. I said, tell me all about it. Uh, and it, it transpired that they actually have active travel as part of their sustainability drive. So that will be uh, another film showing people who work at, the, at that practice, uh, cycling and walking to work and also uh, clients as well. I have got one more thing to show. Yeah, sorry. Um, so, like I say, uh, the, um, they're, they're very much people-led stories. Um, uh, another one that I'm going to be looking at is a, uh, the start of a bike bus, which is a safe way for kids to get to school and ride to school. <coughs> and filming will start on the 19th of January. Um, so the other thing that I wanted to quickly show you is um, just on, uh, if I, can I stop sharing and go and find another video? Have I got time to do that? So I'll just click stop sharing. So I'm just going to show you uh, a previous example of um, some from a film that I did for Birmingham City Council. Uh, about a year ago now, uh, which is um, uh, about somebody who uh, decided to uh, start commuting to work uh, by bike. Just going to get that lined up. <clears throat> um, now then, so if I go back to the meeting. I stopped sharing, didn't I? Yeah. So go back to share. Can, can I uh, just say that I, I know the um, the Greenways, the Two Shires people uh, group very well. I, I have actually been involved with them for quite some years, trying to encourage and support them uh, and what they want to do uh, for the, the route from Evesham to uh, to Ulster. So I'm happy to uh, to uh, help you if if needed on that. Uh, with that, that. Would be... I'm sure you've already made the contacts, but. That would be fantastic, and yeah. um, if you can um, tell them to na name a date for starting work, that would be even better. Yeah. <laughs> uh, right. So, um, yeah, just a just a quick clip from um, from from this one, just to give you more of an idea of what the finished product will be like. Person behind it, you can only learn by asking people with experience. You know, I come along with cows every day. She's great. Cheap exercise to and from work. So where do you go from? Solly Hall. Wow, that's yeah. far. And how long does it take? 40 minutes or so. It's brilliant. Which route do you take in Germany to work? I live in, I live in Great Bar. So I take uh, Hampstead Road all okay. the way to Hampstead Hill, which is quite steep, and um, then to Soho Road and then Jewelry Quarter through to the city. So you're riding along the Soho Road? I know, yes. <laughs> Traffic along there is going to be a nightmare. It is, it is. That's on the driving too. You've got to be really careful, yeah. But I have no choice, I don't know either route, you know. Have you ever tried the blue route? Blue route? Yeah. What, what, what's that? Yeah, the protected cycleways. So um, I use the A38 route on the way into town. Yeah. That's really good. Um, and there's an A34 route out your way too. Yeah, I've used that before, the A34. No. I'll show you on the phone. Yeah, please, yeah. Look. That'd be nice, but at least yeah, it can be the traffic. Yeah, yeah, just take a look at the route. Ah, that makes sense. So that's through Perry Ward Park. The new route that I took was, was an eye opener, amazing. I mean, I didn't know, I mean, living in Great Bar for 12 years, riding bike for close to five years, I didn't know that route existed. The Blue Route is exactly what we need more of in Birmingham City and around because having dedicated cycle lanes like that would encourage people to, to switch to cycle differently. You know, in my five years of experience in riding bike, I never enjoyed it as much riding through the park. It puts you in a great mood, at least it, to me. I would say to someone who is thinking about commuting by bike, definitely go for it. It is a no-brainer that you know you switch to bike. Uh, 
Uh, yeah, uh, unfortunately, it was lagging quite a bit uh, again. But um, what I can do is um, perhaps send you a link if you'd like to uh, to have a watch of, of that uh, and the other films that I did. So that was a, si a set of six or seven films, and I'm basing this new series on the on the same um, uh, uh, principle. Um, so. I think that, that really concludes the, the talk. Obviously, if you've got any questions, happy to, to answer yeah. those. Um, I'm still looking for stories. Um, I mean, what was nice about that one, for example, was that it was about somebody choosing to um, travel to work by bike. Initially, because he didn't know how to go about it, he just went the same way he went on a car, with a car. But then, you know, as we talked about it more, um, I think because I, you know, I'm a fairly experienced cyclist I said well you know there might be a different way that you could you could travel to work and then we introduced this idea of talking to other cyclists within his sort of work group uh, and finding an alternative basically a pretty much traffic free way to travel to work uh, and he absolutely loved that as, a, as an option not necessarily all the time because it's a bit slower but um, as an option so uh, you know it's quite a specific uh, individual character-led story that happens to show some of the infrastructure uh, and that's all a lot of new infrastructure in Birmingham um, in a kind you know in a, in a more elegant way than saying here's the new infrastructure everybody you know it's it's more, more of a people-led approach so that's the way that um, the, the films will be made in in Stratford district as well and hopefully be engaging let people know about things that they didn't necessarily know. So um, the dentist film, for example, they uh, do travel, the way they get to work does take in things like the canal, um, the uh, shared uh, cycle and walking routes on Birmingham Road and others as well. So, so they can sort of incidentally appear in the film whilst being a film about a dentist, if you see what I mean. Um, so, yes. Oh, sorry. Can, can, can I thank you? Uh, as somebody who was, um, I, I, I've always been a keen cyclist myself. In fact, I, I actually didn't, um, I didn't drive until relatively late in life. I had my own car until, uh, until I worked in Birmingham. So I actually know the Birmingham routes very, very well. Uh, that I worked at the University of Birmingham. Uh, but uh, I'd say, I, I used to cycle with my daughter on the back, taking her to and from school. One of the things I would, as a result of that, um, I would like you, perhaps you to consider is maybe, you know, covering, making sure that there are some females in the work, a film. I'm sure there will be. Um, uh, the, 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 but the, the safety aspects. One of the things that I find that I don't get on the, my bike quite so often now it is because of um, f a feeling of, of safety, uh, particularly on a busy road like the Birmingham Road, for mm. example, here in, in uh, Stratford. Um, you know, exploring why people are being put off, um, maybe, you know, or ways in which it, that could be uh, improved um, yeah. would be... I know that my daughter and I, many years uh, ago, uh, when she was grown up, we did the John O'Groats Land's End by bike, uh, and I do remember the feeling of insecurity driving through, cycling through some of the big cities. Mm. We, we, had, we took the decision, for example, to go round Glasgow rather than through Glasgow, purely on a, on a you know, security uh, feeling yeah. um, with lorries overtaking us, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. It, it, that, that film that you did in Birmingham of exploring ways in which people can improve the journey and feel more confident in doing the journey would be really, really good for uh, yeah. improving um, people's yeah. access to I, active travel. Yeah, I, th I think that's a really interesting area. Um, and the challenge is how, how, you, um, how you deliver something that has a positive message. Because when, when for example, I speak to Warwick District Council, they, they say, well, you know, we want this to be positive. Um, and when I made that film, he had actually been knocked off by a car once, and I put that in the original script. And then Colmore Bid, who were the people back in that film, said, oh, "You know, that'll put people off." But to me, it was 
great resilience that he got back on his bike and carried on. And he came back and kept doing it and built his own confidence. But it is, it's, you know, it's a difficult area, isn't it? Um, but I think, yes, that showed you, here's a kind of positive example of saying, have you thought about going this other way? You know, it might, might just be a nicer ride going through the park, which it is. Um, and again, uh, and I'm talking about Warwick because, you know, I've sort of been able to get direct feedback from them on, you know, the project and, uh, um, and what could be useful and, and so on and so on. Um, and, um, oh, sorry, I've lost my thread now. Uh, but, um, yeah, so, so th they recognise they recognize that, you know, we're far from a, a perfect world and there's lots of challenges. In, uh, and, and, you know, absolutely, the number one reason why we don't see more people riding around on bikes is their fear for safety. Um, so it's about, you know, balancing that, really. Yeah. Cause if Make you, it, making you know, it a po positive and yeah. encouraging. I've got Councillor Pertigella, then Councillor Stanley both want to be able to ask sure, a few sure, questions. Yeah. So Councillor Pertigella first and then Councillor Stanley. Uh, thank you, Chair. Thank you so much for coming and presenting your wonderful project. Um, your, your um, art films on, on active travel. I actually cycle to council meetings in the spring and summer from Welford, where I live, because we go uh, through the Greenway, yes. the Candlelight Strafford Greenway, but uh -huh. um, it's more difficult in the winter because before I reach the Greenway, we need to go through farm trucks, mm. uh, which can be, be quite muddy. And uh, yeah. so uh, thinking about as well, maybe, uh, you know, having somewhere to change your clothes here as well. And, you know, that could be something that we could see. But, um, um, so obviously it's, it's something that I feel very passionate about. In your presentation, you, uh, you mentioned the bike bus yes. uh, for school travel. And yes. that's really important because obviously we have quite a lot of congestions around the schools. And I know the schools um, have you know, week of active travel. Usually most schools promote that. And could you let us know a little bit more about that? Yeah, of course. Um, and I could do with some help on that one if, <laughs> if you've got some contacts. Um, so, uh, yeah, I should mention, um, and this is a good, good opportunity to mention this, the Birmingham films were nominated for uh, a national award, uh, a sustainable travel awards ceremony in York last year. Um, and I, I wasn't able to go to the, the awards and I kind of wondered how we'd got on, whether we'd won anything or not. So I was kind of searching online. Uh, and then I found a post by a guy called Simon Story. Uh, and he said, oh, you know, uh, we, we did really well. We got nominated, but we didn't win. And then it said he was in Leamington Spa. So I thought, oh, what's this, what's this? Uh, and he runs a bike bus in Leamington Spa, so I've been talking to him. It's quite successful. Uh, and he's now speaking to people within the Stratford district. So he's in contact with Thomas Jolliffe School, but he's also talking to people in Shipston on Stour, and that's a broader conversation because they are very keen there to improve the quality of their town centre and they see active travel as part of that, but they also want to have bike buses for their schools as well. Um, now, what's been difficult from our point of view is trying to follow that up and actually get in contact with the schools and say, we want to do this and we want to film it before the end of March. <laughs> so, so if anybody here has got contact with schools in the district, that would be amazing. Uh, and Simon is a real champion for this. He's a real, you know, he's really getting out there and making this happen and it's a very grassroots project. It's also an international project, which you, you, you may be aware of, that this is a, a, a global movement to have bike buses. Um, but it's a very simple thing, and it's a game changer, because, you know, uh, and actually the people in the Chase in the Sun film, um, uh, um, I've forgotten her name now, but you'd see her at the beginning, and they're, they're actually uh, partners, so they take their children to school in, in a bike bus, and that's in that film as well, in Winchester. Um, so uh, on the 19th, we're going to film in Leamington, 
but we want the other side of that, which is in the district as well. So a new bike bus, Thomas Jolliffe, Shipston, what, you know, whoever wants to get on board with this uh, and, and see that starting here as well. Thank, yeah. thank you. Uh, I've got Councillor Stanley coming in who wants to raise a question now and then Councillor Crump afterwards. So Councillor Stanley, would you like to go ask the question first? It, well, it wasn't just a question, it was just a thank you and um, just to say that I'm the ward member for Salford Priors um, and also sit on the parish council here, so I'm fully aware of the greenways and if I can help in any way by making connections um, for your video, then yeah, I'd love to help if I can. That, okay. that was all really, so thank you, yeah. Okay, so uh, just to give you a very specific uh, answer to that. Uh, so I'm talking to Joe Harvey. Um, he is now chasing up to see if he can get a date for when clearance work will start, which is meant to happen before the end of February, and I'd love to have a date for it. Yeah, we've got, there are, I think there are a few issues, as I'm sure you can understand, so, um, but if, if he gets in touch with the parish, then I'm sure they'll get back in touch with him about, about the Greenways. It's um, awesome. something that is happening. So. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Crump. Yeah, I'm going to say thank you for that. Um, yeah, re really interesting. And I, I use the Elias way because yeah, I'm in Southam. Um, so, yeah, that, that's really active and it has been used for a while. And we're trying to link in other other routes as well. Um, but the, um, the county council, I'm a, I'm a twin hatter and I'm a county council and I've got road safety as, as, as well as fire and flooding. As you can imagine, I've been quite busy last, last week or so. Um, the, but if you want to get in touch with me, I can provide, get details of um, people who do our safe and active travel because they link into the schools and we're trying to encourage people, younger people, if we can start getting them young and get the peer pressure, get the parents to do it. And in the same way, yeah, I know it's, it's probably a bit of a strange comparison, but in the strange way that younger people used to put peer pressure on the parents not to smoke. That way, if we can get them to to put peer pressure on to walk or or, or cycle or do a mixture of both and, and and that, so I think um, I've got some contacts at the county council. So if you get in touch with me, I can put them on to you. That that's fine. I'm sure they they will be able to put you with some really exemplars of doing it. Um, so I think that's how. And I know in rugby, they've made uh, a school zone around school uh, one school recently. Again, making it a lot safer to, to travel to school. And so, therefore, that's one of the fears. You know, why would I put my child on a bike when I know there's going to be a HTV coming past me or something like that? So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm more than happy to help with that if, 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 it's, uh, if the offer still stands there. Yeah. Councillor Hatch, you also wanted to ask a question. Making sure you a couple few people I'm hoping you're in touch with. Do you know about the um, opening up the old tramway between Stratford and Shipston? Yeah, you, so you're in contact with. Yeah, them. so I'm in touch with. I think the the only people connected to that that I'm in touch with is the Cycle Forum. Okay. So there might be another group that's more specific. Yeah, I think they're in. But, um, there's, um, it's a community interest group they've set up specifically for this route, and they, it's it's going through the council at the moment. Okay. So, um, and do you know about Warwickshire Cycle Buddies? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, and I think you're probably in touch with Angela Kennedy from the county council because she's been doing the active travel at Shipston. Um, mm, uh, um, there's a consultant which maybe why you mentioned Shipston, because there's a few things going on. No, that on came there. through Simon, who's running the bike bus. He put me in touch with oh, that. okay. So it'd be good to check whether I've been in touch with yeah, Angela, because, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, I, I'm finding new, yeah, like yeah. today, I'm finding new people in new departments all the okay. time, so. Okay. <laughs> Well, can, can I thank you for the presentation? And it sounds as if there's quite a lot of pe people who are willing to help. Uh, yeah. And I've got contacts um, uh, that maybe if I suggest that if anybody's got any contacts, they feed them through to um, Eleanor Warren and then she, uh, she can pass them on. Uh, and uh, uh, vice versa, if you've got any contacts or you want to know anything from us, uh, feed it through uh, Ellie and, um, yeah. and, and she can contact us as, indivi as individuals for our yeah. own areas. So, so um, uh, Councillor Stanley's self for priors, I'm Ulster, so the other end of that Greenway project, 
Um, we've got Shipston here and we've got Welford all, all represented here um, today as, and uh, Councillor Crump across um, the, 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 uh, the, the far east of the, of the uh, district as well. So we've got quite a wide coverage and we, we're willing to help you and I hope it all goes well and we Thank look forward to the final product. Thank you. So, okay. so if I drop Elliot a line and then yes, we'll please, and we're there. we're happy to we're happy to do whatever we can to help. We're all uh, the majority of us are uh, have are use active or have used active travel. I think the majority of us have, have been um, keen cyclists ourselves, uh, so we're w willing to help you. Okay. Thank, Thank, you. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. And um, moving on to the, the final part of the um, agenda today is um, to receive a verbal update from the Climate Change Project Manager to consider potential schemes to encourage active travel across the district. Yeah, so just following on from Michael's presentation, really, um, as he mentioned, transport is our biggest emission contributor across the whole district. It's responsible for 55% of total emissions. So it is a really significant area that we need to kind of tap into and start making a difference in. Um, it's tricky, as we're not the highways authority, to know how we can do this. So I suppose this is more of an ask, really, to start for people to start thinking about what potential active travel schemes might look like across the area and how we as a council can facilitate it. Um, we have a couple of things kind of going on at the minute so we do have the cargo bikes which sadly aren't being used so we've got five bikes five um trikes which are available for businesses free completely free they can rent them and use them for deliveries um collection last mile delivery that kind of thing throughout the district but we are really struggling to get up any interest but it would be great <laughs> it would be great to see them being used we're also i think quite open to how they're used so if anybody comes across anybody that would like them for a school or staff or members to use um, to kind of reduce business travel miles as well, then that would be really that would be really useful. So if anybody has any ideas in that area, then please do drop me a line and we can have a look at that through the project plan for Ambition 2. Um, we've also got the new kind of active travel routes at the Riverside project. So I was wondering if there's potential for us to do any kind of community engagement works around making those be used to travel into town rather than cars. Um, so again, just if anybody hears of anybody that is interested, please do put me in touch with them and see if we can get some good active travel projects underway this year. Um, so yeah, happy to hand over if anybody has anything they want to discuss. Councillor put together. I've actually raised the uh, issue in uh, at the climate change panel in May about the um, the e-cargo bags because mm -hmm. we had a presentation and I've been in touch with um, local businesses as well and there is a problem with insurance because mm -hmm. they belong to Stratford District Council. Yeah. But you are asking. Am I r correct to, th to um, understand that then you're asking businesses to insure and insurances are reluctant to insure something that is, does not, is not owned by the businesses? So there was an insurance problem. Otherwise, yeah. I think you will get more uptake and I think they were going to go back and, and think about how to resolve this. Yeah. So we are looking at a workaround for the insurance problem. It does remain to be a stumbling block. Um, so it's with the projects team at the minute to try and find a potential solution. I think in some ways we might have to be quite creative because I suppose the kind of situation in which they're going to be useful for businesses alone might be quite slim, but they are great. We well, um, went to pick them up from Pashley. They're great fun. It's a real waste that they're kind of sat in a container. Um, so I think that's why we're quite open to than being used for other formats, for example, staff um, on site visits in the town centre um, or for local school children or whatever that might look like. So we're going to try and find a solution to the insurance. But in the meantime, if anybody has any ideas, then, yeah, please let us know. Um, they, from um, Michael at the back there, would you like to ask any particular question on that one? Yeah, I, I can respond to that on the insurance, actually, because I, I did have one of the bikes um, 
because I do delivery work around Stratford and I used it for deliveries. Um, and I was only required to get public insurance, public liability insurance. I wasn't required to insure the bike. So, um, so uh, as you know, I, I chair um, Little Free Ulster, uh, so we have public liability insurance because that just covers the the um, the possibility of the day of a uh, injury to the person not to the property or whatever. So um, uh, maybe that's a, a way around it, public liability insurance. Yeah, that, that's but, all but I was asked we, to But get. we do need to get proper advice yeah. on that. Yeah. Um, if I can pick this up with you after, yeah, yeah. it would be really helpful to hear from you, actually. Yeah. Um, thank you, Michael. Uh, Councillor Hatch. Do you, do you know the speed and the scope of them? I was just thinking that maybe councillors could rent them to go to and from meetings. Councillors can rent them to okay. go to and from meetings <laughs> if they want. It's obviously, I think the problem we had, we took them to the service fair, but we were just going into kind of autumn, winter. And I think we might have done a little bit better if it was a sunny day outside. I think the top speed is 20. Um, yeah, they're really cool. Uh, just a question uh, that then um, we, we're launching the Community Climate Change Fund. Would uh, I'm, I'm, a, I'm assuming that um, active travel projects could be um, eligible for some of the money that um, from the Community Climate Change Fund if it came from either a constituted group or a parish council or if they wanted to do further research that would help them, um, you know, if, apply for a Community Climate Change Fund in future, for example. Would, that, would I be yeah. right in that? Yeah, absolutely. So I think one of the things that we're looking to do around the Community Climate Change Fund launch is to engage with the communities through the LCE process. Um, so it's likely that we'll use active travel as a theme for people to think about and then use the finance from that as an enabling factor. Um, so if somebody, for example, wanted to buy some pool bikes or something that they could use, then they could put a submission into us and it'd be funded through the council's fund. I'm just thinking that maybe all the other councillors um, that in the council might want to know more about this. We, we, we can perhaps make sure that they, they're all kept informed because that good ideas may come from um, a, a very wide range of councillors across the district. Uh, and I think, you know, they, this, I'm very excited by the, this prospect, not only the film, but also um, being able to um, find a way of inc actively encouraging people to... to to use um, transport in this way, active transport. Thank you very much indeed for that uh, verbal update. And the next item is urgent business. Do I have any any uh, business that's considered urgent that we need to take here today? No, Chairman. In which case, can I just thank you very much for attending today. It is, um, I'm, we will get the link into the, the little films and I do look forward to being able to hear more about um, that your progress and the finished report, finished films when they are finally um, done and um, have an update in future on that one as well as an update on what people are doing uh, applying for funding. Thank you very much indeed. Oh, the Councillor Crump, you've got a you've got a hand up. I can't see you very easily from uh, my position, so yeah. my apologies for yeah. missing you. Yeah, no, just very really quickly to do with the trike. I think it, you know, I think if we could tap into the business to use it like an advertising, um, you know, when you see it, when you walk into the uh, Elizabeth House, it, it's quite striking whether they could actually use it as some form of advertising. Um, you know, we used to see people with uh, on the back of the lorry, didn't they, with uh, the advertising boards up. You know, I think it, it could potentially be an option for people to use uh, and promote their businesses. Um, and also potentially promote Stratford District Council at the same time. So it's uh, just just one idea. It might have already been thought of, but uh, I don't know whether Eleanor has got any comments about that. No, it's um, it's a good idea. We'll definitely take that away and have a look at it. Thank you. Okay, so we've got no other urgent business, but we've, it's been um, had some good outcomes from the meeting, which will be reported on afterwards. And I'm, I, I will undertake, we will undertake to have better data and uh, that's from the public participation question. Look forward to the, the films uh, and we will make sure that the contacts are, um, you know, go two ways and, uh, and, and, and we'll do whatever we can on that one. So thank you very much indeed for your attendance. It's been very fruitful and I look forward to you coming along to the next climate change panel as well. Thank you very much. End the meeting at this point. <laughs>